the state life trod the narrowest of narrow lines, providing the IRA with intelligence on who the suspected British agents were and providing his handlers, his British handlers, the, who the IRA leaderships were. So uh, State Knife was run and recruited by the army, by military intelligence, known as the Force Research Unit, known in shorthand as the FRU. Uh, he was an individual who was directed by his hand, his military handlers. My understanding is that he was never handled by MI5. He was handled by military intelligence. And what happened is that these different agencies, uh, MI6, latterly MI5, uh, RUC Special Branch, all operated independently. There was no sort of joined up intelligence operation. And they all jealously kept their secrets themselves. If they had an agent like shape, like steak knife, then they would be very reluctant to share that knowledge of that agent and certainly the product of what he was saying with rival who would have thought they were all fighting the same enemy and therefore worked together, but it wasn't like that at all. There were intense uh, you know, territorial in and institutional rivalries between uh, the, the the different uh, elements of, of British in, intelligence. So uh, Snake Knife is recruited and works his way up the ranks of the IRA and ultimately reaches a very high level, which to the British and to his 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 military handlers uh, is is great news because. He becomes head of the IRA's internal security unit, unit, colloquially known as the Nutting Squad. The Nutting Squad, because that's the nut, and what ended up. That that's what marked the end of many of the suspected IRA informants, bullet or bullets in the back of the head, in the nut. Following, hence the following. Nutting Squad following a vicious session of torture and usually like a confession, be it forced or, or not, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I have I got hold of uh, uh, not just the transcripts of some of these interrogations, but the actual tapes of them. There's no suggestion of the tapes, as you could imagine, <laughs> of torture, but the evidence afterwards from the post-mortems indicated that there were signs of ill-treatment and torture. I mean, they you know, the IRA complained quite rightly about the way that their uh, that their volunteers, their comrades had been ill-treated in Castlereagh, but that was nothing compared to the way that I've known that some of the suspected informants or touts, as they were known, were treated prior to their final demise with a bullet in the back of their head. Um, so it's... It, so because State Knife is in charge of this internal security, security operation, he then knows who the suspected touts or British agents are. He identifies them and then the interrogations follow. But also he tells, one assumes, his handlers which agents, which of their agents are in jeopardy, so they can get their agents, you know, clear out of the way. Uh, so State Knife trod the narrowest of narrow lines, providing the IRA with intelligence on who the suspected British agents were, and providing his handlers, his British handlers, on uh, who the who the IRA leaderships were. So it worked both, both ways. And he was a great asset to British intelligence. The problem is that a lot of what is written about State Knife, not all of it, and there was a really good documentary on BBC Northern Ireland a couple of nights ago, which is on uh, on iPlayer, about State Knife. <clears throat> and it just, and a lot of it is based on, on speculation because State Knife died 
two or three two or three weeks ago and took his secrets to the grave with him. But the question over Steak Knife is how much did his handlers, basically the military, know about those who were going to be executed, murdered by the IRA? And if they knew about them, why didn't they intervene to stop it? That That's the question. And so the issue is, what was the involvement? What did the British state know about what was happening? What did military intelligence know about the jeopardy uh, that their agents were under, whom Slate Knife would tell them were probably going to be nutted, nutted, executed, murdered. Uh, that question still has to be answered. And I think, you know, we've got to be careful about making, I mean, one assumes that Steak Knife's handlers would have known who was likely to be uh, arrested by the IRA and interrogated by the IRA. And therefore, you know, why didn't they intervene to save that individual's life? I mean, it was... It, it was a dreadful conundrum. And, you know, we don't know the truth. We may never know the complete truth about Steak Knife, but the 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 um, operation to find, to get at the truth that was set up in 2016 under John Boucher, former Chief Constable of, of Bedfordshire, with, you know... A, I think the budget must have been unlimited, effectively, to try and get to the bottom of it. Uh, Mr. Boucher has virtually finished his investigation, uh, but nobody knows, apart from Mr. Boucher and his team, exactly what the conclusions of his report is going to be. And I certainly don't know, uh, and it will be you know, read very closely, uh, and it's very important. It's the most definitive report that's ever been commissioned by any British government looking at collusion. There have been other reports about collusion between loyalist paramilitaries um, and, and the British state, but there's been nothing of this, uh, of this intensity, this duration and this expense. Yeah, I, I was going to say, um, I mean, they are playing, the, like, like state nice handlers, for example, they're playing a very, very tough kind of, probably like like a chess game of sorts. Where like, if you're if you're one of their rats, and if I'm one of their rats, but you're higher up, it's kind of worth it. It might be worth it in one sense for me to, for 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 me to get caught, but to but for you to stay, even if my getting caught, um, would even like boost your position. You know, if if it made it look better, um, that Peter that Peter caught a rat, and uh, it, it it turned out it was John. Um, yeah, I I think there's there's definitely accusations that there was like a trading element. They would trade one one lesser mole for 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 the ability to keep another one. And the other thing is like you 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 might be able to save me another another mole, but if they use your information, it might be a little obvious that it came from you. So they're showing their hand. There's there there's a kind of a there's a real kind of juggling act going on with that, you know. I say nobody knows the truth of what State Knife actually did. It's all speculation. And I think a lot of that speculation may well be true. Uh, but I work on the basis that you can speculate as much as you like, but in the end, you've got to have evidence. You've got to be sure that what you're saying, what you're publishing is accurate. And if you're not sure, you say so. It, you know. I would I would write or, or broadcast. You know, it would appear that, or the likelihood is that, but we you know we can't be sure because getting the proof is really difficult. One thing that the uh, that my colleagues in BBC North documentary, which I say is a you know terrific piece of work, is they got hold of um, a statement made in the court case over an alleged informer who was rescued by 
the RUC, well, I assume by the SAS and various other units before, you know, the, before he was killed, before he was, quotes, executed. Uh, and state life also gave a statement at the trial in which he describes actually uh, pulling the trigger to kill uh, uh, another suspected informant called uh, Joe Fenton. And that statement from State Knife, which uh, my colleagues in Northern Ireland got hold of, State Knife says that he actually pulled the trigger and killed killed Joe Fenton. This was shortly the other case in which um, uh, State Knife was involved. And his involvement was proven because when forensic searches were done of the house where uh, Sandy Lynch, who was the informant who actually was rescued by the British, uh, was interrogated, they found State Knife's fingerprints in the house. So that was evidence that he had been there. So the fact that State Knife had made this admission in court and the fact that he was there, forensically proven, uh, at the house where uh, Sandy Lynch, the other alleged informant, was rescued and then exfiltrated, got out of the country into a, a, a safe house somewhere in the UK or abroad. I mean, we simply don't know. That's that's evidence. That's hard evidence. And coming across that is 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 really is really difficult. But that was one of the rare occasions when you can actually tie steak knife down to killing somebody because he had admitted it in court, in a court statement um, and the fact that you know he was there at another interrogation and these are you know are, are difficult and rare to come by no of course so, of you know, course we, so we you know we await with interest uh, mr boucher's report